how to inspire better student note making in Google Keep. Picture one of your junior chemistry students pulling up Google Keep to retrieve a note from biology class on the connection between plants, photosynthesis, and carbon sequestration, and linking this concept to another note from Earth and Space Science class on using limestones as a carbon sink, which may then lead to another note about the carbonate chemistry in marine environments. Okay, maybe in a perfect world, this exact sequence of events may then lead us to solve climate change and the demise of planet Earth. But all jokes aside, wouldn't it be amazing if students could actually take, retrieve, and process notes from their various classes throughout middle and high school using one easy digital system that stays with them throughout their schooling that can't get lost, ripped, or stolen? In this video, I will show you how I started using Google Keep in all of my high school science classes, including chemistry, AP chemistry, AP Biology, and my biology labs. Okay. But don't despair. I have not forgotten about middle school students, as there is a clear advantage to starting Google Keep for note taking and note making early. Because as the name implies, you get to keep these notes, pun intended, as students travel through the education system. If, yes, big if, your school supports the Google Workspace for Education. But before I delve deeper into the Google Keep mechanics, let me credit my son, Aiden Helfont, himself a YouTuber who is deeply invested in personal knowledge management. He calls it PKM. Though he's not using Google Keep, but instead Obsidian, maybe because he was at one point really into Minecraft, Please refer to the description below for Aiden's YouTube channel, as well as a link to his podcast, a podcast that Aiden has done with me in which I describe my Google Keep experience in the classroom, as well as my entire and most riveting life story. Okay. So in order to see Google Keep in action, let's start going through the note taking process by capturing the concept I focused on in my recent video. So let's show you a quick uh, look of that in my YouTube channel. And then we're back at it with our note. So in this particular video, I'm discussing physical change. And so to title the note, physical change, that sounds actually like a pretty good idea. Okay, so next we get to the meat of the note. So instead of just dictating what students should write, I often ask them what they already know. Like, give me an example of a physical reaction. So they might come up with the fact that changes in physical states, such as melting and freezing or boiling, are all physical reactions. And thus I follow up with, now why is this so? Why is this a physical change? Well, my students may reply, if it's a good day, because it's the nature of the substance, in this case water, that does not change. H2O remains H2O, whether it's frozen or liquid or a gas for that matter. Get it? Matter? Is there another physical change that does not involve a state change, like melting and freezing? How about solvation? The process of dissolving a solute like sugar or salt in the solvent wa water. Is that considered a physical change or a chemical change? Well, based on the lab investigation my students have completed and that are detailed in the video I referred to a sec ago, they may come up with the fact that solvation must be a physical change because you can get the same amount of salt back that you originally dissolved in the water by boiling off all the solvent and also the salt before and after its dissolution still gives you the same flame test color. So again, the nature of the substance does not change. Okay? 
So KCL stays KCL, which is the example salt that we use in our investigation, whether the ions are together in the solid form or separate in solution. And as you can see, as I'm teaching in class, I'm modeling what to include in the Google Keep note. But each student writes the notes themselves. Okay, fine. Some students will look at the Promethean board and copy word for word what I'm writing. But I hope you can see I'm trying to model a good habit here, so bear with me, please. Now let's add an image to really drive home this concept. Let's Google physical change or physical reactions, as I just did here in the Google search bar. And here students get to choose their own image obtained from their device. The one image that speaks to them by simply dragging and dropping or copying pasting, as I'm going to do, into the Google Keep note. Okay. So notice that there are some words in this image, like crushing a can, melting an ice cube, mixing green and red marbles. So the power of Google Keep is if I now close this note and I were to actually search for one of these words, let's say sublimation, okay? I can now do a search. I never type that word. And when I search for that word, my Google Keep note comes back up again. So it actually recognizes the word in the image. I think that's powerful. Now here's another nice thing. Let's say one of your students is having a connection issue or the student is absent and you would really like the student to have a certain note relating to a key concept you discussed during class. As a matter of fact, one of my students spent the entire first quarter abroad and was able to obtain all the chemistry notes we created because a friend in class so kindly shared their note with the student. I would say all our chemistry notes. So I'm going to show you here how this can be done by sharing this most interesting note on physical reactions with one of my sons. Not Aiden, but Aiden's twin brother, Sky, who's actually currently studying at Utrecht University in the Netherlands. And he is just dying to stay on top of all this high school science information. So Sky will receive an automatic um, email notification if I were to actually type in um, his email address here. But I know my son, Sky, and let's be honest, he doesn't really want to receive a note having to do with high school science or basic science for that matter. So let's instead have Dr. Helfont, that would be me, share this note instead with a mock student, as I've already typed in here. And this mock student is called Chem Board. And so I typed um, my mock student in here, typed the email address, I can hit save, and then that note would actually shared with Chem Board. So let's now travel to Chem Board. And so we have a whole bunch of uh, emails in there, but I'm opening up the email that's relevant to this. And that says, note share it with you, physical reaction. Okay. So what we can now do is that student, say Chem Board, can open this note in Google Keep. And there is the exact note. And so there are some choices now. Okay. So if you click on these three dots, the student has some choices. Chemboard can choose to make a copy of the note and then change this exact note in whatever way the student would want. Uh, the student can also, well, delete the note by simply removing uh, his or herself. Um, that's another option. Um, and there's some other choices here. You can add a drawing, add a label, copy to Google Docs, but I'm going to get to that uh, detail in a sec. So, in any event, you can basically share notes with other students. Okay, so we've gone now through the basic note taking in Google Keep. Sure, you can add indeed some bells and whistles in terms of adding a label. So let me show how that can be done. We go back here, add a label. We can enter uh, or create a label. It might be, I want to label this note that it's uh, chemistry. So this is the chemistry uh, course, okay? So we're creating that label now. And so now we have that label underneath here. Uh, what else can we do? We can give it a color, all right? So often my chemistry notes, they are all in yellow. So I can make it a yellow color. 
Um, what else can I do? What other bells and whistles? I can pin the note. So right now I only have one note in this mock student, but if I pin the note, that simply means when you open Google Keep, that is the note that you see right from the get-go, okay? Um, so I feel like I've covered the key areas. Um, what I have not shown you yet uh, is the following. To really process or to stick with chemistry verbiage, distill the information students are taking in. Teachers have to encourage their students to go beyond the mere writing down, or should I say copying of what they hear in class. So this distilling of notes is where the note taking turns into note making, which is the process of reviewing, connecting, mm, dare I call it bonding, and synthesizing ideas from the concepts learned in class. So let's say my students in chemistry are getting ready for a big assessment on the atom. So let me now go back to my teacher mode and go to my chem notes. There we go. Um, so many notes that we have taken since the start of school in September on the atom. So how to process the notes just on the atom, since we've also taken notes on the periodic table and we started to take some notes on bonding. So to encourage students to distill their notes on the atom from Google Keep, let's create an assignment in Google Classroom. So as a teacher, we can create assignment. I already kind of started one, review on the atom. And I've added into this Google Classroom assignment an actual Google Doc that um, is going to be copied to every student in the class. And um, I'm giving it some points. Uh, we're at this point in marking period two. Um, and I can throw in a due date. I don't know. Uh, maybe it's going to be uh, next week. And, um, and then I'm going to sign that student. Now, I'm not going to click the assign button because that would freak out my students right now coming away from uh, the Thanksgiving break. Um, but let's go to the actual Google Doc with that um, assignment in there. So there are now two methods to insert no notes from Google Keep into the Google document. It could even be Google Slides or even Google Sheets, if you wish. So the first method is to do so from within the document itself. As you notice here, there's a side panel. If you cannot see that side panel, it might be hidden because of this little button here. So right now you don't see that side panel. Again, I'm moving my cursor to the right top and now you see it again. And as you can see, there's lots of different things in this side panel, but Google Keep is right there. So I'm going to click on that. Okay. So we have some options here. First of all, I can search for the word Adam. And a lot of notes will come up that actually have Adam in them. So I'm counting about one, two, three, four, five, six notes from my Regents Chemistry class in New York State. I'm also counting three notes from my AP Chemistry. I gave them a different color. For whatever reason, if you know the answer, please uh, leave a comment in the YouTube uh, comment section below. I'm getting way more Adam notes out if I actually pop out uh, the Google Keep into a new tab. Now I know I have my Google Keep already open, but I'm just gonna show you what that looks like. It's gonna open Google Keep back into a tab and now I'm gonna search for Adam again. And I'm gonna notice that there are way more yellow notes that have the term Adam in them. Again, more than what I was originally able to find from within uh, the Google Doc. So let's stay now within the Google Keep tab and let's see what we can do here. Okay, so let's say I want to um, pick a particular note on the Adam. Let's start with this one. Adam, the smallest unit of matter. So down here are three buttons, and if I click on that button, I can do a couple of things. I can um, obviously edit this note. I can copy that note into Google Docs, which basically means that that note is not going to end up in this Google Doc. It's going to end up in a different one, okay? So maybe that's not quite what I want to do, though. Um, I can also grab the text that is present in the image of this note. So um, that would be another thing that I could do. 
grab image text and then it would be in my clipboard. Let's just try a few things. So I'm gonna grab the image text and let's see what that actually did. I'm gonna try and paste it in here. Um, that basically just gave me that image. Uh, let's see what else we can do. We can select all this text and of course copy it in the Google Doc, which basically just leaves us with the original note in a different form. Um, but these are just some choices that we have, okay? We could also drag and drop one of these images right now into the Google Doc. So let's do that. Now it is there, okay? So these are some choices that we have to take some select notes from Google Keep and move it into Google Doc. But is that really what we wanna do? Let's think about what makes sense for the student. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm actually going to select everything that I've got and delete it, except for a review on the Atom. Had the caps lock on, ignore that. Review on the Atom. And let's see what we really wanna do here, okay? Google Keep is certainly not perfect because it's kind of difficult to move certain notes within the Google Doc. So how are we gonna deal with this, okay? So let's think again about the whole point of note taking versus note making. What do we as teachers want students to take away from student note taking? Would it be possible for our students to get into a habit of taking their own notes and then eventually grasp which notes they may find useful in terms of making connections between the various concepts learned within a given course and possibly even between courses? Or is this too much to ask for at the high school, let alone middle school level? So let's go back to this Google Classroom assignment, all right, that I mentioned earlier, and I'm still in the Google Doc of that, that will guide students to distill their Google Keep notes on a particular concept. And again, we'll stick with the Atom. For the younger students, or students that may need a bit more hand-holding, you may wish to provide them some key questions, which I'm now gonna copy here from my script. So let's do that and show you what that would look like, okay? So you may wish, and since my script is actually black and white, let's make sure that the text shows up black. Some questions would be, what are atoms composed of? Or what are the three subatomic particles? Or a more advanced question might be, um, how did Ernest Rutherford Let's go there. How did Ernest Rutherford's gold foil experiment lead to his discovery of the dense nucleus located in the center of each atom? So if we now go into that last question, a student could go back to their Google Keep notes and maybe find the actual Rutherford note, if we had one. So let's see. Look at that. We have here Rutherford's gold foil experiment and we have some actual um, screenshots that are coming from students using an app called Pear Deck. I'll do a separate video in the future on Pear Deck that highlights um, what that actual experiment looked like, what they need to learn from that experiment. So by reviewing that note, actual screenshots from students' responses, they can now use that to actually answer this question. So again, this is a review on the Atom that helps students distill their note. And I'm showing you here three exact key questions that we as teachers can feed them, okay? But for the more advanced students, you could actually coax them into coming up with some key questions by providing them not with the actual questions, but by providing them only with keywords that can be turned into actual questions for them to answer using their Google Keep notes. So sticking again with the Adam example, you could propose some terms like, okay, and I'm gonna copy this over. Bear with me. So we have here such keywords as atom composition. Come up with a question related to that. The gold foil experiment, come up with a question related to that. 
And perhaps we could even uh, propose a question that includes the term atomic radius trend. And that would really take it to another level. Okay, So um, the key here is for students to actually turn these terms into questions and then go back to Google Keep to help them actually find the answers to these questions by searching through all the notes. And that way it would actually help them to distill these notes. So by completing this review assignment, it would force students to go back to their Google Keep notes and see which notes would help them to complete this assignment. And it could also help them decide which notes to really keep in Google Keep and which notes to archive. And it's pretty easy to archive a note. For example, if we decide that we no longer need the note on, I don't know, let's go back to the atom. And let's say that we no longer want the note on the history of the atom, then we could simply archive that note. And that would mean the note is gone for now. Um, it can still be retrieved, but it won't be in their plain view. Okay. So in summary, I've shown you now how we can distill these notes from Google Keep. Um, the final more advanced task for students would be to turn these distilled notes by completing that review assignment that are now present in that review assignment and express these distilled notes. What do I mean by express? Well, sticking with our Adam example, students can utilize their distilled notes to actually come up with a model of what their current understanding of the Adam actually is. It would be the student's way of expressing these notes into their own understanding. Okay. So I'm not yet delving deeper into this express step for now, but I will get back to this perhaps in more detail in a later video. So altogether, we've now completed the acronym coined by Tiago Forte called CODE for capture, you're capturing notes in class, you're organizing them in Google Keep by giving them certain labels and titles. We've distilled them by basically going and completing a review assignment with some select keywords or questions that can then be answered using the key Google Keep notes. And then the final step could be to express these distilled notes into possibly a model that would give them a full understanding because they are creating this model of, in this example again, the atom. See the description below for more information about Tiago Forte's philosophy on personal knowledge management in his book called Building a Second Brain. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Bedankt voor het kijken en tot ziens.